This is part 86 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to build a jQuery menu using data from a database table. So here is what we want to achieve. Using this data from this database table, we want to build this menu. So if you look at the table here, we've got four columns. The first column is ID. The second column is the menu text. So this is the text that will appear on our menu. And if you look at this parent ID column, this is very important. This is what is establishing the relationship between these menu items. If you look at the first four items here, they are the country names, USA, India, UK, Australia. So they are the root items within the menu. And notice the parent ID column for those four rows is null, meaning they're the top items. They don't have a parent above them. And if you look at the next two rows, Virginia and Maryland, their parent ID is 1 and this column references ID column in the same table. So the menu item with ID 1 is USA. So these two rows, that is Virginia and Maryland, are children of country USA. And if you look at the next three rows, AP, MP, Karnataka, they are the children for row with ID 2. Row with ID 2 is India. So AP, MP, and Karnataka, they are the states in country India. And if you look at the last three rows, their parent ID is 9. And if you look at 9, that is Karnataka. So these three last rows are cities within Karnataka state. Okay, so notice the menu here. We've got the first four countries, USA, India, UK, Australia. Those are the root items. Within India, it has got its children, AP, MP, and Karnataka, the three states within India. And Karnataka has got three children, the three cities within Karnataka, Bangalore, Mangalore, and Mysore. So that's the significance of parent ID column. It establishes the relationship between these menu items. And the last column, active, this is going to determine whether if you want the menu item to be enabled or not. So this active column is one for all the rows except Mysore. So all the menu items will be enabled except Mysore. So if you look at Mysore, notice that it is grayed out. So it is disabled. So if you want any of the menu item to be disabled, you know, simply set that to zero. All right, so let's see how to build this. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So the first step here is to create the table itself. So here is the table, uh, create table script, and here is the insert script. I've already executed the script. And the next step is to create a stored procedure. So here I have a very simple stored procedure, SP get menu data, and all the stored procedure is doing is selecting all the rows and columns from this table TBL menu. All right, now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET web application project within the web.config file. I have included a connection string to my database. Now let's go ahead and add a class file to our project. And let's call this menu.cs. So the properties within this class are going to correspond to the columns in this table. That is ID, menu, text, parent ID, and active. So let's go ahead and create those properties. So I'm going to create an integer property, ID, and this is going to be an auto-implemented property. And let's call this parent ID. Now, if you look at parent ID column, parent ID can be null. So I'm going to make the data type here nullable integer and we want a string property and the name of the property is going to be menu text so this property corresponds to this menu text column and the last property that we want is active so I'm going to create a boolean property because the corresponding column in the DB is a bit column so it can either store true or false. So Boolean, and let's call this property active. And I'm going to add one more property. And this is going to be of type list of menu, the same class. So why do we need this property? Let's call the property list. So this property is going to store the children of a given menu item. So 
For example, if you look at country USA, it has children, two children, Virginia and Maryland, the two states that belong to USA. So to store that parent-child relationship, I am using this list property here. So if the country is USA, then its children is going to be Virginia and Maryland stored in this property, list property. All right, so that is our object. Now let's go ahead and add a generic handler. And let's call this, let's select web and then generic handler. And let's call this menu handler. So here we are going to write adio.net code to retrieve the database data. So let's bring in the required adio.net namespaces. So we need system.data. We need system.configuration and we also need system.data.sql client. So within our process request function, I'm going to write some adio.net code in the interest of time. I have already typed the required adio.net code. So let's copy that and paste it right here. So what are we doing? We're reading the config, uh, connection string from web.config file and then here we're creating a list of menu object and we are creating an instance of SQL connection object using this connection string that we have read from the web.config file. Next, we are creating a SQL command object. Using this command object, we want to execute this stored procedure, SP get menu data. And since that is a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the command object. We are opening the connection, we are executing the command. And while we are looping through each row within the reader, we want to retrieve ID, menu text, parent ID active and then you know add that menu object to the list and you know all these properties are straightforward except for this parent ID now notice parent ID can be null so that's why we are checking here you know within the reader do we have a db null dot db null value if that's the case then we want to store null in that property Else, if it is not equal to db null dot value, then we want to convert that to an integer and store that against this property in the menu object. Finally, we are adding that menu object to this list that we have created here on the top. Okay, now, so that's straightforward adio.net code. So this process request function is going to retrieve, you know, the menu data from the database table. Now, what I'm going to do is write another private function here. So let's call this. So basically, this is going to return us list of menu object. And let's call this get menu tree. So what is this function going to do? It's going to build us a hierarchical menu tree and return that for us. And we're going to pass two parameters to this function, list of menu and let's call this list and a nullable integer the parent id keep in mind parent id can be null so i made it nullable integer okay so what are we going to do here so we are going to pass the list of menu items basically whatever we have retrieved you know within this process request function from the database we're going to pass that list to this function and this function has to build us a hierarchical menu tree for us for the moment if you look at the data that we have right here you know we have hierarchy here but we don't have that you know parent child relationship in an object oriented fashion so what i'm going to do here is write some code to give us you know okay the parent item is usa and all its children are these the list property should have all of them Okay, so we want to build such kind of a hierarchical tree. So if you look at, for example, India, India has got three children, and out of these three children, one of the child has got three more children. So we want that entire hierarchical tree to be built so we can easily construct, you know, um, the menu from that object. Okay, so, and that is what is this function going to do. So I'm going to return list dot so i'm going to write some link code here so list dot where x such that 
x dot parent id equals whatever parent id we pass to the function. And we want to select all such in our rows. Now what I want to do is project a new object. x such that new menu object. And whatever we are going to project, we want to convert that to a list and return that because the return type of a function is list of menu. Okay, so here we are going to construct this menu object. And if you look at the menu object which we have created here, it has got all these properties. So let's go ahead and initialize those properties. So we want to initialize ID property. So ID equals x dot id so whatever we get back and menu text equals x dot menu text parent id equals x dot parent id active equals x dot active and the most important thing is the list property so what should this list contain it should contain its own children so to get its own children, what I'm going to do is call the same function recursively. So list equals, remember, what is the data type of this list property? It's list of menu. And if you look at this function, get menu tree, what is it returning? It's returning list of menu. So I'm going to call the same function recursively. So list equals get menu tree and the parameters that you pass to this function are important. So what are the parameters that we need to pass? We need to pass the menu list and the parent ID. So the list is going to be the same, but parent ID is going to be x dot ID. So this ID right here. Okay. So let's see how we are going to use this function. Probably that will make it a bit clear. So within our process request function, we have already built um, you know, a list of menu items. And here, let's go ahead and create another variable. Let's call this list of menu. And let's call this variable menu tree equals, I'm going to call this function get menu tree. And to this function, I'm going to pass this list that we got from the DB and the parent ID I'm going to pass null. Remember some of the rows, I mean the top level items within the menu, the parent ID is null. So we are passing null to this get menu tree function. So first time when this function is called, we are passing the list that we got from the DB and the parent ID is null. So what is this expression going to do? It's going to retrieve all those items, all those rows or objects that have parent ID null. Okay, and then it's going to build a list out of that. And for each parent that we get back, you know, it's building the child items by calling this get menu tree function recursively. So this is going to give us a hierarchical, you know, menu tree. All right, so all that is left now is to convert that or serialize that to JSON. So let's go ahead and use the JavaScript serializer class. This class is present in a different namespace, system.web.script.serialization namespace. So let's create an instance of JavaScript serializer class. Let's call it JS equals new JavaScript serializer, JS.serialize. And we're going to pass this menu tree object and this function will serialize that to JSON format. And what do we want to do with that JSON string? Let's go ahead and write it to the response stream using this context object. So context.response.write, whatever we get. All right, so let's go ahead and save the changes. Let's go ahead and build this and see what we actually get from the DB. So let's navigate to menu handler dot ashx. 
So look at what we are getting from the DBA. So we have ID 1, menu text is USA, parent ID for USA is null, right? And active, that's true. And look at the list property. This is the most important thing. So this list property now contains two objects. The first object is Virginia and the second object is Maryland. For example, if you look at Virginia, look at that ID is 5, menu text is Virginia, parent ID is 1. So the item with ID 1 is USA and it's active, um, true and look at the list that is an empty because Virginia does not have its own children. Okay, So we've got a hierarchical menu tree here. Now all that is left is to write the required jQuery code and use the jQuery UI menu function. So here we have a web form and within the web form I have a div element and I have an unordered list element and I have set the ID of the unordered list to menu. You can give it any meaningful ID you want so I just called it menu. Now what we want to do is build an HTML structure with parent-child relationship. That's what the menu widget in jQuery expects. So on that unordered list, if we call the jQuery UI menu function, it's going to build us this menu for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So here within our ready function, I'm going to write a function, a JavaScript function. Let's call this build menu. Now to this function, I'm going to pass two parameters. And now we're going to pass the parent HTML element. So I'm going to call it parent and the menu items, the entire hierarchical menu tree, the JSON um, object that we get from the database. Okay, So this is a collection of items, so I'm going to use jQuery each function and loop through each item. So let's loop through the items and as we are looping through we want to call a function. So as we are looping through I want to create a variable let's call it list item. So to this unordered list we want to add list items. So list item equals li and to that we want to append the menu text. I can use this keyword here so as we are looping through each item this refers to the item that we are currently looping through and we know the object that is returned back is going to have this menu text property. So that's what we want to be, you know, display in the menu. So this dot menu text and we want to close the list item. Now another thing that I'm going to check is this list item that we are adding to the menu, you know, whether we want that to be enabled or disabled, that's driven by this column active. In the object we have active property, so I'm going to check if not this dot active, right? If it's not active, then what we want to do, we want that list item to be disabled in the menu. And if we want the list item to be disabled, we need to add a class to that list item. So I'm going to use this um, li dot add class. So let's actually wrap this using a jQuery wrapper. So we get jQuery IntelliSense. So li dot add class, and the class that we want to add is UI dash state dash disable. So jQuery UI is going to make that menu item disabled if that class is uh, applied. Okay. Now we want to append that list item to the parent that we are going to pass into this function. So I'm going to say li dot append to unordered, I mean the parent that we are going to pass to this function. All right. So now I'm going to check the child items. Okay. So as we are looping through each item, remember the items can have children. So for USA for example it has two children and whether the menu item has children or not how can we detect that using the list property that we have in this object, right? So I'm going to check here if this dot list if that is not undefined and 
this dot list dot length greater than zero then we know that you know we've got child items so what do we want to do at that point we want to create an unordered list because if you have child items that should be the sub menu so I'm going to create an unordered list so dollar unordered list and let's close the unordered list okay now we want to append this unordered list to the list item because that is going to be the sub menu so li dot append to unordered list dot append to because we want to append this unordered list to the list item so unordered list dot append to the parent list item okay and then I'm going to recursively call this build menu function again okay because we want to build the child items and again this build menu function it expects um, you know two parameters the parent so the parent element here now is going to be the list item that is going to the parent and list is going to be this dot list okay so a very simple recursive jQuery function which is going to build you know the HTML structure with that parent child relationship for us now let's go ahead and issue a jQuery Ajax request so dollar dot Ajax let's go ahead and build our options so the URL that we want to call so the URL is going to be menu handler dot ashx so let's copy that and specify it right here and we want to issue a get request and if the request completes successfully we want to call a function and the data type that we are expecting back from the server is JSON So this function is going to receive the data from the server what do we want to do now we want to call this build menu function so I'm going to call build menu and to this function we need to pass the parent element the parent element is this unordered list element with ID menu so dollar menu that is going to be our parent item and the items we are going to have in this parameter okay so that's the data that we receive from the server okay so all that is left now is to call jQuery UI menu function so this is going to build us that hierarchical structure and on that we're going to call the jQuery UI menu function okay so let's save all these changes let's go ahead and run the page and look at that we get it but I think there is some issue so let us see what is that you now look at that it's not building you know quite the way we want it to be so let's see what we are doing here so basically here the parent is going to be unordered list not the list item so that's what is the mistake so let's save our changes and run this one more time and look at this we get what we expect and if you look at USA we have its children India we have its children and if you look at Karnataka notice that Bangalore and Mangalore enabled but Mysore is disabled because we have set that to zero so here is the menu handler code that we have seen and here is the get menu tree recursive function which builds us that hierarchical structure and here is the HTML and jQuery code thank you for listening and have a great day